take one lump of Play-Doh, take some cocktail sticks, some matchsticks and a few other random pieces of trash, mix it all together with a big dollop of inspiration and what you get? The ultimate seven Play-Doh maths or math games, whichever you prefer, in existence. Games that will make your eyes water. Don't believe me? Check this out. This is Early Impact. Let's do this. Hi guys, I'm Martin from Alien Impact, and towards the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to feed a real-life alien as well. A little bonus there, so stick around for that. Right, let's get cracking on with these Play-Doh math or maths games, and these are great for any kids between the ages of about three to seven. So let's take a look at number one kind of stuff, and also some little balls of dough. Get the children to make these, these little circles. These are, it's basically making shapes. It's a simple but super exciting activity. The easiest way of doing it is making 2D shapes. The little circles are the corners of the shape and the cocktail sticks are the sides. And there we go, I've just made a very, very simple triangle. But you can do all sorts of different things. You can do things like 2D shape, uh, 3D shapes rather. If you show them what the shapes look like, you know, if you can get, get a cube or a pyramid or something, get them to make some pyramids. I find children like to make pictures with this as well. They will make something like a rocket or Santa's sleigh. And it won't necessarily be a mathematical shape, but it will have shapes in it. And I find that is the best way of doing it. A bit of storytelling added to this really brings it to life. Game two, fill the eyeball. <laughs> Pretty much all kids are fascinated by gruesome, disgusting eyeballs for some bizarre reason. So get them into a bit of counting, you cannot go wrong. To make an, a spooky eyeball, all you need is some kind of lid. Very, very, it's like the easiest resource you could ever make this one. Get some kind of lid and draw a pupil on it with permanent marker. It takes like less than a second to sort of do that kind of thing. Then you are ready to go. The idea of fill the eyeball, there's different ways of doing it. I quite like to use the timed version. You get some kind of time, like 30 seconds, and the idea is, in the 30 seconds, the children are gonna make these little balls like this, and put them in the eyeball. And you try and make as many as you can in the time, and you know, 30 seconds is up, how many you made? I've made one, two, three. You can also do a challenge where you can see how many little bits you can get into the eyeball. It's all good for problem solving, counting, and all that kind of stuff as well. If you want to really go to town, you can put some numbers in the eyeballs as well. You can put, for example, a number three next to the pupil. That would be the ultimate challenge for a child to get three little balls of dough and put them in the number three eyeball. Give it a whirl. Very, very exciting stuff, the eyeball challenge. If you're liking these ideas so far, then please do just do a little ding on that like button underneath this video. That really helps me out, spreads these ideas to a much wider audience. So little ding on the like button, Thank you so much. Number three, hours of fun with this one, possibly even days, maybe even weeks, if you wanna really, really go for it. This is slap the dough. Very, very exciting. You need some kind of dice. I've got this homemade dice that I made myself. Literally just a building block with some numbers written on in permanent marker. Again, a kind of 10 second challenge to make a resource that will last a lifetime. And then some Play-Doh as well. It's good to have some kind of big tray for this, like a big tough spot or a big, you know, play tray or something, and get the children to make loads of little balls of dough, this kind of stuff. Loads of little balls of dough all over the place, and then you're ready to go. Okay, so you've got loads of balls of dough. Roll the dice now. One of the children rolls the dice. For example, three. Now it's a spot the dough. Very exciting moment. What are you gonna do? Each child is gonna splat three balls and count at the same time, a bit like one, two, three. This is a great one-to-one -one counting game. It's really good for getting it into your head that it's one point or one hit the one number, and that is a big process you all need to go through. Hours, days, weeks of fun, definitely worth a go. Game four is splat the dough, subtraction, whoop. What you need for this is some way of giving them a subtraction problem. I've got these bones, which is spectacular, with these subtraction questions on, and the answer hidden by a mysterious question mark. I would say splat the dough, subtraction is my favorite way of introducing subtraction. It's really visual, it's really physical, and it's just exciting, which you know, is a tricky thing to get into subtraction sometimes. What you do is six subtract five, for example. This is the number of balls you make, so we've got six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is the number that you splat, so let's give it a whirl. One, two, three, four, five. And as if by magic, you're left with the right answer which is one. And here we go, one unsplatted ball. Very exciting. Some children like to take them away as well. They like to splat them. When they're all splatted, then take them away, the splattered ones. 
which works great as well. It's just something that they seem to do in reality. Little top tip for you there. But yeah, splat the dose of subtraction. Definitely my favorite way to introduce subtraction. If you're liking these kind of games, then I've got a free book for you. It's honestly totally free. The link is in the description under this video. It's called 50 Outdoor Number Activities on a Budget. Totally free. Loads of inspiration, loads of pictures of spectacular things you can do in your own home or in your own classroom outdoors. So check it out. Number five is Wizard's Wands. It's all getting a bit spooky now. We are going to make a wizard's shop is the idea of this. And what do wizards need more than anything else? Magic wands. So a bit of a challenge. The kids are going to try and make four or five magic wands out of the dough that are all a bit different. What will they come up with? Okay, so I've made some ones. Here they are, a full selection. And I've tried to be a little bit imaginative at least. There is a little tiny wand. There's a bigger one. There's this kind of, I was very proud of this one, this kind of curly wand, a larger one. And then this kind of weird sort of dousing style wand as well. Again, I was pretty proud of. What kind of maths or math can you get into this? Well, loads, loads of different concepts. You can do things like count them. How many have you made? You can do things like ordering through length. Which is the shortest, which is the longest. You can do things like the concept of putting them next to each other to measure them. Lots of children don't actually understand this, but you have to put things next to each other to measure them. You know, start them at the same level. And that's a, a skill you have to teach. It does have to be ones as well. You can adapt this for different topics. It could be something like superworms family, for example, or snakes. Who can make the biggest snake? Who can make the smallest one? All that kind of thing. It's just a, a way of making models and getting loads and loads of concepts into it. Number six is making models. This is something that lots of children like to do anyway, and if you can get a th you know, throw a bit of math or maths into it, it just makes it so much more exciting. What you need for this is just kind of some Play-Doh again, and then some kind of loose parts is good for this. Some random objects in some kind of tinker tray. Like for example here, I've got some stones, some screws, some little matchsticks, and some pegs or clothespins, whichever you prefer. There are some things that lend themselves quite well, some themes that lend themselves well to maths models. For example, aliens are good. If you make aliens, there's always gonna, they're always going to have like loads of different legs that you can count, or different heads. You know, how many heads or how many eyes has it got? Other good things are things like superhero vehicles that will have loads of different wheels and windows and stuff like that. Buildings is a good one. You know, how many windows has it got? How many doors? All that kind of thing. Of course, let the children have a go. But if they're, they're struggling for ideas, I'd stick to one of those like aliens, superior vehicles, some along those lines. I'm gonna make an alien because that is a really good one for counting. I've got my body and I've just put some little matchsticks in the body and I'm just gonna stick some heads on. Here we go, so we're gonna have four heads. And you get the idea basically. Loads of different skills involved. There's all the kind of counting, you know, how many heads have you got? One, two, three, four. There's stuff like symmetry going on as well. There's all the things like doubling, like if you put two screws in each head, you'd have eight on the four heads, so there's a bit of kind of multiplication involved, and just loads of counting, problem solving, just loads and loads of stuff, but something they actually want to do at the same time. Number seven, you're in for a treat now, you're gonna learn how to feed a real life alien, which is a rare skill. What you need is to build your alien first. Bit of a cop out. What you do, get some kind of box, something like this uh, cereal box, and cut a little hole out. This is the alien's mouth. Then you stick an alien head on the box. The kids can make the alien head themselves, or they could draw it on or paint it or something. That's all good. And you get this very, very simple alien with a mouth. So you need this, you need your alien box, you need a timer as well, which sadly I cannot find my timer, but if you, you imagine I've got a sand timer for about 30 seconds sitting right here. Then you need some Play-Doh as well. And the challenge is, one child is going, they're gonna have 30 seconds to try and feed the alien as many balls of food as they can. Food are a bit like this. You make a little, little ball of food and post it into the alien's mouth. Great for all the children love posting things, which there's so many of them. You know, they love posting any objects into any random hole they can find. This is a perfect way of tapping into that interest. So 30 seconds, how much food can you post in? Off you go. Great for fine motor. And at the end, you, know, you find out I did three, for example, in 30 seconds, whatever it is. You could write a big challenge sheet. You could have the, the leaderboard, who got the most bits of food. You could post other things in as well. It doesn't have to just be Play-Doh. You could post in like dry pasta or something, or make a menu, or make different foods out of the Play-Doh. 
all sorts of different things you can do, which is great for a bit of counting, a bit of recording, and all that kind of stuff. Along with these Play-Doh Maths games, or math games, I've got a whole host, hundreds and hundreds of other games, a lot of them that I share in other videos. Another video I've done recently is called Nine Circle Time Math Games, and that is, that is a beast, and that is going to be popping up onto the screen about here. So if you want to go and check that out, all sorts of different games you can do, simple circle games that involve a bit of counting, recognizing numbers, all that kind of stuff. So check that video out. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.